So I just had like the creepiest conversation I have ever had in my entire life. Um, so I went into Bangor to go to Starbucks because we have internet here, but it's not very strong and I needed to do a lot of work. Plus I just needed a change of scenery, so, you know, more to get out of the house because how can you get, need a change of this for scenery? Beautiful. So I'm at Starbucks. I'm working away. I forgot my headphones at home. It's first mistake. Um, and I'm sitting there. I'm sitting in one of the armchairs. And this guy, probably like my parents' age, maybe a little older, comes up to me and starts talking to me. Well, first he asked me what happened to my knee because I have my knee brace on. This happens to me all the time. I have no problem talking about my health, as you all know. So. I tell him, oh, I have RA, I keep dislocating my knee, and he asks me questions, I go through the whole story. We start chatting, and he seems like a kind of lonely guy, so I'm going with it. It was a normal conversation. Over the course of the conversation, it becomes steadily creepier and creepier. Um, first, he started asking me questions about, like, how much money I have, how much money my parents have, things that you just don't talk about with complete and total strangers. And I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but he kept asking me more and more questions about it. He's like, there's upper class, there's middle class, there's lower class, what are they? And I'm like, I'm not talking to you about this. And so he, I, I mean, I just repeated that over and over again. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to, I'm not comfortable talking about that. And he... He keeps going, he keeps going, and, oh gosh, I'm so tired, um, he just won't stop talking about this. He, he ended up being homeless, and he was trying to, I, he was trying to be like, oh, you don't know about the hardships of the world, and I'm like, do you really want to play that card with me? I have had a lot of hardships. They're not the homeless hardships, but I've had, I've had some hard things. My life is not perfect. My life is not great. I can't work right now. My health is awful. And I was, and he was just like, oh, you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. No, I wasn't. Um, and he, he was talking about how he was biking and he saw these girls. He, he was talking about these girls, these like 16, 17 year old girls in their short shorts and bare feet and like tight shirts and that was like kind of creepy. And then he gets, he keeps talking about it and then he was like, it's like the Lord sent them to me and now I'm feeling pretty creeped out. Um, and I'm trying to find a way to end the conversation without it getting even weirder or harder or him I don't know I was really creeped out and he starts talking to me about love and have you ever been in love have you ever had someone be in love with you you know he's like oh you know you're a pretty girl or was my like oh thank you and he's like oh like yes I've 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 been in relationships yes I've been in a relationship where a, a guy said that he loved me and told me I was pretty and all that kind of stuff and he was like he wanted to he wanted to talk about if obsession was a mental illness. And he kinda like jumped around, so warning bells were going off in my head. My gut is already kind of screaming at me. And warning bells are going off. And he's but he's like, yes, you know, like obsessive like obsessive compulsive disorder, that's a mental illness, definitely. And then he switches back to talking about love and obsession. And he, this was probably the, the creepiest thing. He was like the levels of love are like lust, murder, God. So now by this point, I'm I'm done. I'm done with the conversation. I'm done with it. He keeps talking about it and he's like, what if someone said what if you was like what if you love someone and you went to talk to, and you try to talk to them and i'm like okay if you my warning bells are already going off he's like 
and it's like you know if if you're saying you love someone and you try to talk to them for the first time okay we're getting to stalker material here he's like and they say no you can't talk to them you can't be with them you can't even look at them I'm like all right you have definitely been a stalker you've definitely been a stalker and he's like well what would you do i was like i wouldn't do it because i've now i've reached the point where i'm just flat out saying no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take like, anything. I'm just shutting him down entirely. He's like, is it creepy? Does it sound creepy you're talking about, talking about these 16 year old girls? I was like, yes, it does. What if you love someone and they said you couldn't do you that? Know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go near them. Finally, I was like, all right, I have to work. Cause I came to Starbucks to work and I was like, I, ha I have to work. He's like, oh, I frightened you. And of course I'm like, yes, you frightened me, but I'm not going to tell him that. I'm not going to give him that power. So I was like, no, I just really have to work. I just really have to work. I just really have to work. And it took like five minutes for him to leave. And like, I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say five minutes. We went over this multiple times. Like, you don't frighten me. Nothing you said frightened me. I have to work right now. And finally he get up, got up and he left. And he got his bicycle and went away. And the other the people who had been Starbucks came over and were like, are you okay? He's gone. Are you okay? And I, I was really, really grateful for that. And I'm just like, I don't have words. I just don't have words to describe how I feel now because that was I just terrifying. So I'm going to put on more comfortable clothes. I'm going to work and distract myself from thinking about this because I need to. I need to be like over it and fine before the night when it's cause it kind of it can be really creepy being in the middle of the woods. And I, I need to get over this and be fine. I have my guard dog. There's my guard dog. I tend to protect me. So, we're all good. Good morning. It is Sunday, August 31st. I haven't filmed in a couple of days because I've been working on other stuff. Um, I have the first draft of my book of short stories completely done and I'm so excited. I'm aiming for a January release date. There's still a lot to be done and I have to, you know, study for the GRE and apply to my master's programs between now and then, so it may end up being later than that. But if just, I mean, if you want more up-to-date information, check out my Twitter or and or my website for my writing and that'll be somewhere around here and I'll let you know. Um, subscribe, to, subscribe to receive emails from my writing website and you'll know when everything is updated. So today is my last day hermiting. I return to Boston tomorrow and I am packing because this is actually going to be like my home base and I'm going to go between Boston and here, you know, to make me feel a little bit better about the living at home at age of 23 thing. So um, I have all my clothes here. This is my closet, and I'm just going to slot it. Come on, closet. Come on, closet. There we go. And turn the light on. There we go. And I'm going to be packing, and I'm actually writing a blog post about packing. Because I'm, I have to pack anticipating that I will be in Boston for at least a couple of weeks. And that takes... A fair amount of forethought. So I'm actually going to be writing a blog post, not for my blog, but for Hello Rigby, and that'll be up September 9th, and that'll be about how to pack for a fall trip. And I'm going to be talking about what you should bring, what you should, how much of some, how, how much of everything you should bring, and of course the most important part is making sure you bring pieces that are good for flexibility and using different outfits. So, um, I'm going to do, I'm going to be packing for that. I'm going to film a little bit of this. And then you can read my full blog post on September 9th at hellorigby.com. Okay, it seems like I finally have things set. Um, just a little thing ahead of time. I will not have links to all of these things, but similar items will be featured in my post on hellorigby.com. So you can see that. Um, just because some of these things are, you know, from a couple of years ago and it's impossible to find the links. And also, it took me forever and a half because I'm packing for like three weeks. So, here we have jeans, black pants. Like I said, I have another pair of lighter wash 
skinny jeans and another pair of black pants also I'll be wearing. Printed shorts and jean shorts because again it will be warm for a while and I don't have listed in this bottom section obviously yoga pants, leggings, whatever um, but I will be featuring those in my post. So shirts. Long sleeve shirt from J. Crew, short sleeve simple white shirt from Talbot, button up from J. Crew, chambray polka dot button up from J. Crew, v neck from J. Crew, printed green shirt from uh, Anthropology last year, black and white shirt from Target actually. They may, I got this last year, but they may have it again this year. Sweaters. V neck sweater from J. Crew. I love this. What's it made out of? Um, I don't know if it says up here. It's like a really light, it's very thin, it's wonderful. A little bit of a thicker gray v-neck from J. Crew. Um, creamish, grayish, creamish, whitish, I don't know. Um, cardigan from Target. Blue, also very thin sweater from J. Crew. Um, this is, I have another darker blue uh, cardigan from J. Crew that will be featured as well. Simple black and white polka dot dress from H&M. Uh, this blue and pink dress is from Anthropology. What's the brand? That's the brand. Um, just sort of fun. Tank tops. I have this is from J. Crew. This is from Target. This is from Victoria's Secret. This is just a basic um, black tank top. I'm thinking like of wearing this under some shirts and button up, but also like underneath the sweater. And then scarves. Scarves. This is a really thin infinity scarf from Lily Pulitzer. This is a little bit thicker normal scarf from J. Crew. Uh, even a little bit thicker. This is from Target. And this is somewhere in between. It's kind of thin. You can see, um, this is my sister got this for me from a boutique in Boston last year. So this is where we are at in the packing stages. Yeah. Okay, so these are the shoes that I'm bringing. I have a pair of flats from Audrey Brook. Um, I have just like little motorcycle boots. Um, well, I don't, I don't know what brand they are, but I got those from DSW. Like. A year or two ago. Also those from DSW. Duck boots from L.L. Bean. Sperry Topsiders. My Kez, which I love to wear. And these flats from Life Stride, also from DSW. Um, I got all of these except for the duck boots from DSW, actually. Um, and I wanted to talk about coats. I step on my x-rays. Um, I had this fleece pullover from L.L. Bean. Nice vest from J. Crew, a raincoat from L.L. Bean, and a leather jacket I got from like Overstock.com. Gosh, like three years ago now, which is crazy. Um, but this is sort of how I dress. Super exciting!